We're going to Barbuda. What is that? <laughs> Our charts are telling us that the charts aren't super accurate. Can we go dive now? Okay, well we have dinner tonight, but first we gotta clean them. I'm on con cleaning duty. Dinner is served. Oh yeah. My name is Billy, this is Sierra, and our pup Jetty. This is our home. Her name is Adrenaline. We decided normal lifestyle isn't quite right for us, so we've been living an unconventional but fulfilling life of challenge and adventure. Be sure to subscribe below and hop on board. Today, we are leaving Antigua and we are going to Barbuda. But first, we have to put everything away, eat, sail away. So, for breakfast, we are having breakfast of champions scrambled eggs with peanut butter, banana, honey, and cinnamon toast. And it looks like we're gonna have a new addition to our crew. What is that? <laughs> what? What is that? Oh, this, no, this is nothing. Don't worry about this. Just you'll never even notice it. It's hard to miss. It's about 20 feet long. <laughs> like, I think it's only 18 feet. <laughs> so this is called a surf ski. It's pretty much a long, skinny racing kayak that you use mostly in the open ocean. <laughs> And we used to use them during lifeguard competitions and races and training and stuff like that. You guys probably know who watch this channel often. We used to race uh, stand-up paddle boards. Now, this past year, I guess, we sold our stand-up paddle boards before we left, our race boards. And I've just been dying to get on something that can paddle quickly and train and, and stuff like that. This surf ski was on someone else's catamaran down in Grenada when we were down there and I asked him about it and he said he kind of uses it occasionally. But we ran into the boat a few times. Finally up here in Antigua, I ran into him and I just asked if they were thinking about selling this and they said yeah and they're selling their boat and stuff. So awesome uh, South African couple, Steven and Debbie. Yeah, so I bought it from them. <laughs> Mr. Sweezy, your son has inherited your collecting problem. <laughs> And it's not even wide enough for you to ride with him. So we told you yesterday we were coming back to Jolly Harbor to be able to get a form to be able to check out of Barbuda and grocery shop. And as you can see, we are fully stocked up now. Pineapples, melons, breads, bananas, fruits, vegetables. Our fridge is jam packed with all the goodies. Oh. Avocados. A new day, but the same process. Coolant. Check. Belt. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I'm gonna have to tighten that up probably, but that's all right for now. Oil. Good. Shade is down. Sail is ready to be raised. Is on. New addition is secure. Captain is happy. Give me a smile. You know that song? You can't always get what you want. <laughs> Doesn't apply here. <laughs> so we only have two more big sailing days for this engine to be alone. After that, they're both going to be working again. As I said before, we have just said goodbye to Antigua, and you guys are probably wondering why the heck didn't we film any of it, and 
What were we doing the whole time? Well, yeah, we got to Antigua. We were just doing a ton of work, editing videos, trying to get them out for you. And then uh, my cousin and his wife, Kelly, came, uh, Stephen and Kelly, came to visit. And we had a great time with them, but we didn't really, you know, have the cameras rolling. Except when we went spinnaker flying. Uh, so we met up with our friends Marty and Rachel, and they showed us how to fly off the front of the boat with the spinnaker, which was a blast. But anyway, so we spent about three weeks just in front of the computer. We had a bunch of friends in the same anchorage in Jolly Harbor, so at night we got to go out to dinner with them and over for card card games and game nights and... Uh, My honey fell. So we got to have some fun, but again, with friends, like we try not to bring the camera out too much. So yeah, lots of computer work. We had a great beach there that we worked out on every morning and ran jetty. So we did, we stuck in the Jolly Harbor area for a while, but then we went around to like uh, English Harbor and Falmouth Harbor, and we saw the start of the Caribbean 600 with all these big, fancy, expensive race boats and yachts, and that was wild. Um, if you guys follow us on Instagram, you probably saw a bunch of that. Um, again, we didn't film a lot of it, but we did explore that whole area. We met some locals that we went hiking with, and uh, yeah, they showed us a couple cool hikes up, one up to Shirley Height. It's definitely a cool island to check out. Definitely one of the more affluent islands, um, at least in the areas where we were, than a lot of the other islands south of here. Everything was a little bit more expensive here. I think it's going to be that way as we head up to the BBIs and USBIs and stuff like that. We're getting back into where it definitely costs a bit more money to, to stay and travel and do things on the island. Yeah, but one of the my favorite things about Antigua was Green Island was a beautiful spot and they had free moorings. Yeah. Like that's very rare to find free moorings and they were in good shape and they were in a great location. A lot of the reef around there was like apocalyptic dead and I have a feeling that was from the hurricanes a few years ago. But we did find some coral that was coming back to life and a couple big lobster. So that was fun. There was definitely a lot more places to anchor, like beautiful, kind of more secluded beaches that we could have hung out on. But like we said, we were doing a lot of work, so we didn't get to see them, but we will be back. What was your favorite part? Just everything, walking around Nelson's dockyard and Falmouth Harbor and just seeing those fa crazy fancy racing sailboats was, was really cool. Um, the hike up to Shirley Heights, Green Island was beautiful and uh, yeah, Jolly Harbor is a nice, quiet little place with a really good grocery store. Just all, all the little things that add up. It made it a cool place to visit. Um, again, we could spend another couple of weeks here and just explore all around, but it's time to move on and we've been really dying to get to Barbuda, so we're excited for, for this next stop. We've heard that Barbuda is probably going to be the closest we find to the Bahamas, since the Bahamas, and we're really excited for that. Lots of good diving, big, long, white beaches for this girl, and just looking forward to spending every waking minute underwater. Or, if you're Billy, flying a kite. All right, just pulling in through a reef here in Barbuda at Spanish Point little bit sketchy. Our charts are telling us that the charts aren't super accurate, like the little notes that people can put on the charts. So Sierra's up in the bow, just watching out visually for reef, and uh, I mean, it all looks pretty, pretty deep. There's some, there's a, it's not super rough, but there's definitely some swell out here, so the swell is breaking on the shallow reef, which makes it a little bit easier to see, actually. And we only draw three and a half feet, so it seems pretty straightforward visually. Everything I'm seeing is pretty accurate. But, uh, but yeah, the best thing to do is, I mean, the sun's really high. It's like 1.30 p.m., so the sun's nice and high. We can visually navigate through the reef here, which is always the best thing to do, better than any charts. You should be doing that anyway. Yeah, almost there. I have a feeling this is going to be a really, really cool spot. The wind will pick up in a few days and it'll be a really good wind for kiteboarding. It looks like some nice flat water in here behind the reef. Whew, only a handful of boats in here right where we're going to anchor. Looks like a neat spot. I'm excited. How's it look up there? Good, but you said diving was our priority. When the wind's down. Can we go 
died now. in Barbuda and it is beautiful out just crystal clear water I'm towing Sierra behind the dinghy I got a little sick the past week so I'm just still recovering from that my sinuses and stuff so I'm not going to water today just pulling Sierra around we already got two nice conch right here right where our boat is anchored and it's just amazing look it is like Sierra said before, just like the Bahamas, pretty low-lying land, super clear water, and we're on like a, just a flats area, just a really nice protected anchorage surrounded by a bunch of different reefs, coral reefs all around here. Really, really cool spot. We're so happy to be here. I'm gonna see if she can get maybe one or two more conch, maybe a lobster or two, and, uh, and we'll be set for dinner. Probably a little more than dinner, which would be awesome. No, 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 You went through the gate. I'm supposed to go through the gate. Okay, well, we have dinner tonight, but first, we gotta clean them. And I'm on con cleaning duty. Billy said he would cook, so I will clean. Let's go. So Sierra got some conch today. So it's my job to cook the conch. Sierra cleaned it as well. Thank you for cleaning the conch. So we're gonna try something new today we haven't done before and we're gonna make conch, what do you call it, conch? Lambie stew. Lambie, so they call conch lambie here in the Caribbean. So we're gonna make lambie curry stew. And uh, basically, I boiled the conch to tenderize it. Sometimes you can use a meat tenderizer. I've never boiled it before to tenderize it, but that's what we're doing today. And now I'm just cutting it up. We're gonna add it to what I have going on here, which is just a bunch of vegetables, green bell peppers, zucchini, crushed tomatoes, uh, curry, ginger, onions, coconut milk, and that's like the curry stewing up over here. So as soon as this reduces a little bit, I'll add the rest of the conch, and then we got some coconut rice which is just 
a can of coconut milk, a can of water, and a can of rice, and that always comes out amazing. And we'll throw some coconut flakes in there as well. And that's gonna be dinner. What you think? Sounds delicious. Dinner is served, our coconut rice is done, our conch curry stew has been stewing for a while, so it smells and actually just tasted, it's amazing. So here we go. We're just gonna do a bowl, throw a little of this. We use brown rice for this today. Some brown rice with coconut milk and coconut flakes in there. And then we'll grab some of this delicious conch curry stew. Throw that right on top. So conch is like 100% protein, and it's so difficult to watch when people like fry it to bits because then it turns unhealthy. But look. yeah, it really is healthy. It's all protein. There's like I think there's almost no fat in it, not a lot of fat at all, no carbs. It's like it's like pure protein. So we tried to keep that health with stew instead of any fried fried conch fritters. Conch fritters are amazing. Don't get me wrong. Once in a while though. Oh yeah. You taste it first. Where can I follow you on Instagram? At Tools in the Summer. Slash. At Tools in the Summer underscore Sierra. At. Hey you. Jenny the Gypsy. So, conch season in Antigua slash Barbuda is from July 1st through August 31st. And if you're out time, outside of that, those couple months, then it's open, but your conch has to be at least seven inches. Those months are conch closed season? How is it? Delicious. <laughs> really good. Mmm. Mmm. Super tasty, lots of vegetables. Success. He may wing it, but it always comes out perfect. But yes, comment below if you want the recipe and make sure you are subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.